Now, when the people of the Philippines vote for a new president on Monday, they'll be asked to think again about a family they drove out of power more than 30 years ago. Then, Ferdinand Marcos was branded a corrupt dictator. Now his son, Bongbong, is the front-runner in next week's election. Our Southeast Asia correspondent, Jonathan Head, reports. She's a sitting vice president with a fine record of public service and no taint of corruption. On paper, Lenny Robredo should be a dream candidate. Yet throughout this election, she's found herself trailing far behind the front runner. People are saying this is among the most passionate campaigns ever seen in the Philippines. Thousands of these people have taken time off work, trying to narrow a lead taken by her rival, is a man with a name, once a byword for greed and brutality, thought in theory to make him unelectable. I must soar above the turbulence. It's been 36 years since President Marcos and his notorious wife Imelda were driven into exile by what's known here as the Edsa People Power Revolution. Now their son Bombong wants to reverse history and retake the presidency. He may lack his father's charisma. The cheering here is as much for the entertainment that comes with every Filipino campaign. <laughs> Yet he's way ahead in the polls. One reason, his alliance with this woman, Sara Duterte. Like her running mate, she's riding on the name of a famous father, the current president, Rodrigo Duterte. If I'm going to put a number to it, at the very least 50% of how he's gotten this far. Uh, the Duterte machinery is strong, he's a well-loved president, so you cannot preach discontent. The people are not discontent, they're happy with the guy. Lenny Robredo! Lenny Robredo supporters have been going door to door across the country to try to challenge the seductive Marcos narrative that now dominates social media, to see if they can change voters' minds before next Monday. It's a spirited effort, but they're running out of time. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Manila. Well, let's go live to another of our correspondents in the Philippines, Howard Johnson. And I suppose staying with that uh, question, Howard, how do we understand Ferdinand Marcos Jr., Bong Bong's popularity, given that the older Marcos has plundered vast sums of money? And he says his father's rule was a golden age. Well, what I've witnessed by being here in the last five years is the use of social media to retell that story, to effectively sanitize and whitewash all the worst parts of it and to turn it on its head and to say that this was a golden era for the country with big infrastructure projects in the name of the Marcos family. Here, it's all about personality politics. You inject your name into the big ticket projects like bridges and roads and they're remembered because of your legacy and your time in office. In other countries it's just publicly funded bridge or a, fu a publicly funded building. And so what the Marcos family have been doing is projecting this idea on TikTok, on Facebook and we have to remember that half of the electorate here are under the age of 40. So many of them wouldn't have had any actual experience of living during the martial law era. And there's this constant drip drip message saying Talk to people from that period. They will tell you that times were really good. But on paper, the economy was on the brink in 1986 and heavily indebted to foreign banks. And Howard, just tell us a little about what the build-up to the election has been like there. How tense have things got, um, given that one of the presidential candidates, the socialist leader, was shot at? Well, the Philippines, uh, their election periods are always fun and lively. Lots of dancing, comedy and music. Uh, they're less about facts and more about feels, uh, very uh, in tune with this young population. Uh, but yes, there, have been, uh, there has been some violence and there has been some uh, allegations of uh, vote buying, uh, ballots being spoiled already, but they are, these are being um, investigated by Comelec, the Commission of Elections here. But uh, what we are seeing is that people will be turning out to these big rallies this weekend to see the two front runners, Bong Bong Marcos and Lenny Robredo, the uh, opposition uh, politician who's faced a lot of trolling online over the last uh, five years since President Rodrigo Duterte came to power. And this weekend they'll have their final rallies before uh, Filipinos go to the poll 
on polls on Monday morning. Uh, polls open at 6 a.m. and close 7 p.m. And we can expect the results to come as early as three hours or four hours after the polls close. Howard, thank you very much. Howard Johnson there, live in Manila.